That's me, by the way. And I've got my Twitter name up, so if you want to heckle, you can do it behind my back online rather than in the room. Um, so I thought, well, how can I talk about the open movement to this mixed audience? Uh, and perhaps we ought to start with some definitions, and from that I could spin off some anecdotes about some things I've been involved in and some issues that we face as a movement in the UK. So the first one, of course, is open means open source. Uh, and you don't need to read all that, but that is the headlines of the definition of open source. When I looked at it, each one of those has a couple of paragraphs underneath it. So it's obviously written by geeks, because it's about open source. Uh, but open source software. Most of you use open source software if you've got an Android phone, or you use Firefox, or you use MediaWiki software, which of course runs Wikipedia and the other projects in the movement. Uh, that's open source software, so that's an important thing in our lives. Uh, most of the web is hosted on open source software. And what, what open source really means is you can take the code and look at it and see what happens. You don't have to trust Microsoft or Apple or Google to do the right thing. You can check whether the right thing is being done by your software. And for some people, that's an important point. Or do we mean open content? Well, we do when we're this community because Wikipedia is open content. And open content is stuff that you can use and reuse and remix and redistribute. And all you need to do is to give attribution. So, of course, the content on Wikipedia, the text that we write, and indeed on the sister projects, and the images that we upload to Commons fall under that definition. So open content is very important to us. As I say, Wikipedia is open content. Or do we mean open data? And this is where you have data, which is a type of open content, because you can re reuse it, but it's available as a data set rather than as text or pictures. Uh, and the most important kind of open data is linked open data, which is open data that uses URLs or identifiers to link things together. So if I mean this person and you mean that person, we use the same, sorry, if you, I mean this person over here and you mean the same person over here in your project, we use the same URL and the same identifier to tell us that we're talking about the same person. Whether they've got different names in different cultures or one of them's called Bill Smith and one's called William Smith, we can use a URL to tell us that we're the same person. And of course the biggest open data project that we work with in our movement is Wikidata, because this is all open linked data. And the use of identifiers in Wikidata, as you'll know if you've seen me bang on about ORCID and other authority control identifiers, are the identifiers that actually tie concepts or people or things or buildings together. That's very important to the way this works. So we have these various types of different open projects, open content, open data, open source software. And we're in, the dreadful cliche is we're in an ecosystem. In other words, we're part of a wider movement. There's the Wikimedia Foundation and the Wikimedia movement as a whole, which runs Wikipedia and Wikiversity and Wikisource and Wikidata and all the others. But they're part of a bigger picture still. So one example is a site called Open Plaques, which records blue plaques that you see on historic buildings, like the one you can just about see here, and similar plaques, so historic information on plaques, all around the world. And not only do they photograph them and add the coordinates and link together URIs, identifiers for the people or the things that the plaques are talking about and the places where the plaques are, but they transcribe those plaques and they make that information available under open <coughs> license. And they link to Wikipedia. You can see there it says read more on Wikipedia. And we link to them from templates on Wikipedia, from templates on Wikimedia Commons, and from properties in Wikidata. So we need to remember that we are part of a much wider movement than simply anything with the word wiki that belongs to the Wikimedia Foundation. There are several other projects like this as well who are closely tied to what we do. Another one of them is Open Corporates which is a database of company registration and directors. So you can see which company belongs to which offshore tax uh, hiding company and so on. And they use Wikipedia uh, to, to group together companies as an identifier and they're really using Wikidata. Again, very close ties. Another open project that you have probably encountered is OpenStreetMap, which is a wiki map of the world. Um, it's probably the biggest sister project outside the foundation with which we interact. Not least because in recent times we've added a feature to allow you to put OpenStreetMap maps 
which are slippy maps that you can zoom in and out and pan around on, into Wikipedia articles and into other pages on projects, projects that we run. So we're very closely tied to them. And I'm very keen, if you do any open street map, that one of the things you do is to add Wikidata IDs to the things in OpenStreetMap. So this building exists as an entity in OpenStreetMap, and if one day somebody writes a Wikipedia article about it, then we will create a Wikidata item, and the ID for that item needs to go into OpenStreetMap. And that's a way that you can help out. And that use of identifiers to tie things together, as I say, is really, really crucial to the way we work. But there are a lot more projects. There are a lot that you and I don't know about in, in non-English languages, for instance, all around the world that are open source. Some are using MediaWiki software, some are not. Uh, some are interfacing with Wikidata and Wikipedia, some are not. But we're all part of this broader movement. And we lose sight, I think, sometimes of the fact that it's not just Wikipedia and its sister projects in the foundation that are part of that. But another important aspect of the open movement is open government. And what that really means is about the government being open with its people about what it's doing, what it's done, and what it's planning to do, uh, allowing people to see documentation. Uh, and a typical example of that is in America, uh, the government itself, the federal government, the, the, the country's government as opposed to state government, is not allowed to copyright any material because it's for the people, it's of the people. I'd love to see this model adopted here, but I don't think it will happen in my lifetime. Um, so this wonderful NASA picture, because NASA is a federal government agency, doesn't have copyright. It's not under a Creative Commons license, there's just no copyright in American law in it. So we can use it on Wikipedia, you can use it on your website, put it on your t-shirt, or do whatever you want with it. Wouldn't it be lovely to have that here? <coughs> Okay. But another example of open government in practice is something that's been slightly maligned, <coughs> but it's the, the Chilcot Report, the report of the Iraq Inquiry, which was published under an open government licence. And some people closely aligned with Wikimedia UK were active in persuading the government a while ago that we should have a, an open government licence, which is Creative Commons Attribution Compatible, and it should be the default for publishing government information. And it now is. We've actually made great strides in that area, and we shouldn't lose track of that. And several other UK authorities, certain councils, are starting to use the Open Government Licence for things that they publish, with mixed results. I'll give you one example a little bit later. Uh, but this report is under an Open Government Licence. So we've done well to put that idea into the government's mind. The government apparently does have a mind. Um, but we haven't quite won it yet, because they publish this as a series of, I forget the number, but it's tens, several tens, 60 or 70, of PDF files. And those PDF files include images of scans, of photocopies, of printouts of electronic documents. <laughs> they don't include the electronic documents. What, what the government should have done was to put up open source, open format files of the equivalent of Word documents within an open format. They should have put up data sets as data, as comma-separated fields or as spreadsheets in an open format, so that people could download them and make use of them. And instead, the community having to do that. So there are people on Wikisource, and there are separate projects <coughs> within this wider movement who are currently transcribing and OCRing and correcting all of the documentation in this report. Now, that's 2.6 million words. So it's going to take a little while. And there needs to be some cross-connection between the various projects that are doing this, which is starting to happen. But you can see the executive summary already being digitised on Wikisource and on these other projects. So that's starting to happen. But we need to tell government why they got it wrong here and how they could do better in future. In fact, we already have told the government that. The, the inquiry was asked to, to publish this in open format and didn't. But we need to keep telling them that. We need to keep hammering on that point. And you can help because you have MPs. You can go and talk to your MP about why this is important and why the government should be making stuff available openly. So a couple of examples. This is um, a picture taken by a West Midlands Police helicopter just up the road in the boring here. And I asked nicely and they said, yes, you can have all our images under an open licence. Um, obviously not the images of crime scenes and things like that, but the ones they take for publicity purposes like this. Now, this is significant for a number of reasons. One, it would be very expensive to hire a helicopter to take this picture, but they've got one anyway. 
But also, even if you were rich and could afford to hire a helicopter, this is restricted airspace. You'd be prosecuted for flying there. The only people who can fly here are the air ambulance, the military, although they don't do it very often, and the police. And so they got a shot that nobody else could get effectively. Great. I persuaded them to do that. They put an open license on all their flicker pictures. <coughs> Big win. A year later, the West Midlands Police helicopter was transferred to a new National Police Helicopter Service, and they won't open license any of their images. They refuse point blank. Presumably, they think somebody's going to come along and give them a shed load of money for all this, which of course isn't going to happen. Um, but again, we need to lobby, we need to talk to the senior managers responsible for that service, we need to talk to politicians, and we need to refight that battle. Having won it once, we need to go back and try again. And a similar example of that, again, here in Birmingham, the local council uses the open government licence. <coughs> I spent some time with some friends lobbying them for that. Their website is under the open government licence. They put all their pictures on Flickr under an open licence so we could import them, so pictures of councillors and all that sort of thing. And then a few months ago, I noticed they'd switched back to using a, a Creative Commons licence with a no commercial reuse restriction. Now, I doubt, I doubt whether anybody's made a big policy decision. I think somebody's just ticked a box without thinking about it. But we need to go back and have that conversation again. So the price of all this free media and free content is eternal vigilance. We have to keep watching and making sure that retrograde steps are not being taken. Can somebody tell me how I'm doing for time? Because I don't have a clock here. Fine. <coughs> Thank you. The government did something very good a while ago, about four years ago now. They said, we know that lots of government agencies have material which people want to reuse, which is currently under restrictive copyright conditions. We'll set up a web portal where you can tell us what data you want, <clears throat> what content you want under an open license, and we will then take that request to the relevant department and have a conversation with them about why they should release it openly. So I said, yes. <coughs> English Heritage, as it then was, Historic England now, describe listed buildings. This is the entry for the building, uh, the pub that we're going to later on today. Or some of you are, at least are coming to, I have. Um, and I said, we want these descriptions under an open license, please. Instead of having to scramble my brain trying to paraphrase this, but not paraphrase it too closely when I write a Wikipedia article about the pub, I should be able to copy and paste it. You know, there's no commercial value in it. It's written by the people, paid by the public purse. It's for the public good. It's information that people need to know in order to protect their local heritage. Please, can I have this? I requested that over three years ago, and they still haven't come to a decision about it. They've closed it once as resolved because the information is available online. And I had to go back, and I had to make use of personal <coughs> contact in the Cabinet Office to say, can you get this reopened? It shouldn't have been closed. Now, I shouldn't have had to do that. It should never have been closed, and it should have been resolved by now. Um, but meanwhile... Historic England, who have this information, have decided to turn their website into a sort of wiki. And they're inviting members of the public to add comments and memories and descriptions of listed buildings and to add photographs of them. They didn't bother to talk to us. They haven't looked at the fact that we have thousands of images already on Commons that they can reuse under open licences. They don't know about Wikilove's monuments, even though they've been told about it in the past when you talk to them about it. They say, we don't know about that. I mean, we're sure that they've been told, but they, they, there's an organisation, but they say they don't know. And none of the material that they're soliciting from the public is under an open licence, because they don't say to the public, you must provide it under an open licence, or even, please, will you consider providing it under an open licence? And a month ago, when they launched this, I kicked <coughs> up a stink on social media and said, you know, this is crazy, why are you doing this? And the guy responsible for it promised to phone me. And the next day, he phoned me, and said, I'm on a train, he left a voice message because I, I was on the phone at the time, I'm on a train, I'll get back to you, and I'm still waiting. So they're not very good at working with the, the open community, and we need to put pressure on them, politically, personally. Um, I think we need to do good cop and bad cop, so you know, I've been bad mouthing them on social media, but I'll be quite nice to them when I meet them privately. You can decide which side of the fence you want to be on when you do that. But, but collectively, we need to tell them that the way they're working is a, not acceptable to us as the public, but B, not sensible. It's not doing them any good. Ignoring the fact they can get the images they want from Wikimedia Commons. It's not helping them. And I see other organisations behaving in a similar way. 
Which brings me back to the most important part of, well, it doesn't bring me back, but I'm leaping back, um, to the most important part of the open movement, which is the open community. Because all of the things I've talked about so far rely on people who are open in the way they work. People who are prepared to donate media. People who are prepared to write software and give it away for other people to reuse. People who are prepared to write software or text on Wikipedia and have somebody else come along and completely rewrite it and change it and challenge their ideas. Uh, a little aside, when we had the event on the 1st of July commemorating the Battle of the Somme called We Are Here, <coughs> the soldiers in First World War uniform all over the country, you all presumably saw that, it was all over the news, there were thousands of pictures posted on social media really good photographs taken by members of the public with their own cameras or their camera phones. And I started to tweet out, please will some of you upload these to Wikimedia Commons under an open licence for posterity. You know, I use a little bit of emotional black man. Let's have some of this media for posterity. Think of the, the, the history involved. And I linked to a page on Wikipedia that I wrote that tells, I put it on Wikipedia not Commons because people know the brand Wikipedia, mm -hmm. that in plain language says, this is why we want your images. You have historic images. We want them for Wikipedia. They have to be under an open license, which might mean that somebody makes some money off them, but it also means we can share them in apps and CD-ROMs and whatever <coughs> else it is all around the world. Not one person uploaded one image. Eventually, two of my friends who'd taken pictures replied to my requests on Facebook, directly addressed to them to say, please will you upload your images so we can illustrate the Wikipedia article which I wrote about the event. Mm. But the general public ignored what I was saying. And I tweeted it under the hashtag, I addressed individuals, strangers on social media, I just said, pictures are great, please can we have them? Not even a no, I didn't get a reply at all. We are failing to bring people into this open community mm. in that specific regard in that they don't understand why they should make their media available freely. Yes? Can I just ask, did you not offer that their name will go with whatever they upload? It's on the page that I link well, to in my social media. understand that, that their name will go with it, because a lot of people like that kind yes, of Yes, no, that, that's in there. You can, mm -hmm. I'll show you the page. Okay. Um, we need to tell people what we're doing and be more open about bringing people in. And one or two of my friends have said to me, well, I looked at your page, which is written in plain English, and it's very clear why you want those images. But then I went to Wikimedia Commons, and I haven't got the faintest idea how to upload these images. I'm sure, yeah, from your reaction, you've obviously come across that as well. So, I'm concerned because lots of media of events, of historical significance, is lost. And it might be in 100 years that the copyright on that media expires. But we won't know because we don't know who's posted it, it could be lost. Twitter might have deleted it from their servers. You know, people will be divorced from who took it. We won't be able to trace them to check whether, when they died or whatever it was. We need to capture that media and tell people, you've got something historic, we need it for our work, but the wider world needs it to be openly available. So we, we need to address that specific thing. But also we need people to understand why it is they can be part of this wider movement. They don't have to all become Wikipedians but they need to understand what open means and why it's important to them and how they benefit from it. Because they all use open source software, open source web servers, they all read Wikipedia. I used to start my training sessions by saying, hands up if you've ever read Wikipedia. <coughs> I don't do that anymore because it's pointless, everybody has. To do that. So here's an example of how well we're doing at welcoming people to the open community. This is the tag that was placed on a new Wikipedia article recently <coughs> that somebody wrote. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different faults were found. The person who left that tag didn't leave a welcome message on the editor's page to say welcome to Wikipedia. Here's a link to a tutorial. Now the article that was written was pretty shoddy, to be honest. It probably needs to be deleted for lack of notability. <coughs> But this isn't the way to tell the person who wrote it that. It's not a way to welcome somebody into the open community. And I'll put my hand up and say I do it. We all sometimes fail to welcome people in an appropriate manner into our open community. Specifically on Wikipedia and the sister projects, but also more generally. I'd like to think that most of the time I do welcome people appropriately, and I'd like to think all of you do. And I know most of you, and I know uh, some of you 
sorry, I know all of those of you who I know do welcome people appropriately. But what I would like you please to do, your homework for today, <laughs> is to find somebody on Wikipedia or one of the sister projects that you work on who has been welcomed like this. And I'd like you to undo the harm that's been done by saying, can I help you? Let me help you rewrite your article. Let me show you how it could be better. Let me give you a link to a tutorial. Let me tell you about the tea house, the area of Wikipedia where patient volunteers will answer very basic questions over and over again to welcome you into our community. And if we don't all do that, then we ourselves are not open and we shouldn't use the word. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Questions, if anyone has any? Yeah, sure. Comments? Yes. Briefbacks? Hi. Um, to what extent should we expect or try to make the general public understand copyright? <laughs> In an ideal world, we should every member of the public should understand what we're talking about when we talk about copyright and open license and freedom of copyright. <coughs> That's not going to happen. We have to understand that. So I think we can all tell people little bits about it. I mean, I'm thinking about how I talk to members of my family who are not photographers and are never going to upload anything. So I don't tell them about Creative Commons and the difference between CC BY and CC BY SA. But I do explain why we want pictures under an open license and how important it is that people share their stuff and allow people to reuse it freely. So you need to pitch your conversation at the appropriate level for the person or the audience that you're speaking to. But where you're talking to somebody who takes lots of really good pictures, and isn't a commercial photographer, and he's putting them on social media and then they're all just disappearing into the ether forever. We need to have a more detailed conversation. You do need to say to that person, look, let me explain how you upload your image to Commons and what a CC by SA licence is and why it doesn't matter if somebody puts your picture in a newspaper and all you get in return is a credit. I have friends who are professional photographers and some of them will never put a picture on Commons or under an open licence because it's their livelihood and some of them will do it when they see a need. You know, they've been to an open license event, an open community event, they've been to a hackathon or something, so they'll take some pictures and put them on Commons because it's part of that community. Or they've taken a picture of an historic event, they've earned hundreds of pounds from newspapers, and a month later they'll put the picture on Commons for us to use because the, the money has stopped coming in and the residual amount they might earn is very low and they're prepared to donate it for its historic value. So you need to have conversations with those people <coughs> about where they might draw that line. But the majority of people who take photographs are not professional photographers, are never going to make any money. They don't market their pictures, they don't put them onto image library websites to be marketed or anything like that on their behalf. They just put them on Facebook or social media and they can be great historic photographs and then they just disappear away and they're lost to everybody, not just to us as Wikipedians, but to the world. And I think that's tragic. You know, I forget the exact statistic, more photographs taken in the last two years than in the entirety of the history of photography, and most of them are lost. I mean, you know, a large proportion of them are, are of no real value historically, they're just selfies or whatever, you know, <laughs> here's my dinner. But a, a good proportion of them are of historic importance or they're educationally significant, and we can use them on Wikipedia and the sister projects, and people will benefit from having them available, and they're still lost. And they're lost and they have no metadata. You know, here's a picture of a beautiful flower. Yes, but what species is it? Where in the world was it? So we need to capture that as well. Hi. Um, I was pleased that you mentioned ease of use because personally, you know, I'm, not, um, I'm a beginner here, but I would go for, to Flickr for free, uh, for openly licensed stuff. But I did wonder about motivation. So I guess that the national newspapers get people uploading images where they probably just loot them. they have no rights over them after that Frequently, yes. but people are willing to do it so you know I wonder what if understanding the motivation for people who are uploading would help persuade them <coughs> yes and I think the earlier them. question about um, attribution getting your name in print being yeah. created will, will, yeah. will entice some people other people it's that, it's that appeal to posterity or it, you know you're helping to educate the world you're doing good I mean, we need to perhaps make more of that as well. But your point about Flickr is a good one. And quite often I say to people, look, if you can't deal with comments, put them on Flickr, tick this image, and I'll import them into Wikimedia Commons from Flickr. Do you, so, do you, do you troll Flickr for pictures? Though? When I want one for a specific subject. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
or when I find a particularly good photographer. And there are tools and there are volunteers that can take a whole bunch of pictures from Flickr and upload them to Common and the Metadata. So yes. But there are too many on there that are either of no use or that are mistagged. So people upload pictures from other websites and put them under an open license because yeah. they don't understand what they're doing. So you have to be a little bit careful with that. Michael. The comment about having to continually make the same arguments is, is an important one and it's often to do with individual people and individual organisations. Mm. So you mentioned English heritage as well. Yes. When we ran Wiki Loves Monuments two and three years ago, they were involved at a very close level. They provided their senior photographer for two years to chair the board of the, yes. um, the judges. Uh, they provided all their information to us on an open license. We were well in with them. Since then, they've got demerged into this new organisation and they've completely forgotten us. Yes, I've uh, worked in local government for most of my career, not anymore, but I'm quite, you know, British are converted there. It's a very good point that um, organisations work in silos, organisational memory is like that of a goldfish. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult problem. And if I knew the answer, I'd be driving around in my limousine today. <laughs> Are we done? Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you.